These are the last tests in our series of Benford's Law Tests. Number one, run the number duplication test in Excel. This is our data. I want to look at the number duplications in the amount field. Insert, pivot table, pivot table. We're good, I have the right range. And now I need to take amount, drag it to the bottom here. Take amount, drag it there, but I don't want sum of amount. I want value field settings, count of amount. I'm good. It actually has run over here, and I want to sort it by count descending. Right click, sort, largest to smallest, and I'm almost there. What I want is I want a table that looks like 5.5, rank, dollar amount, count, and first two. I will put the rank over here. I will put the dollar amount here. I will put the count here. And I will put the first two digits over here. We can make this nice and bold. Uh, We can center, we can widen it a little bit, column width, let's make it 12. The count I can get from there. And so I will go equals B4, and I have the count. And the amount I can get from equals A4, and I have that. I wanted the First 15 rows, so I need to go down to row 18, and that will give me 15 rows of data. Almost good, I need the rank, and for this I'm going to use the Excel function rank. Let's go equal the rank of this, and look in the range here. And also, zero for descending. And it tells me that this is rank number one. It has the highest count. If I copy this down, what's going to happen is that G4 to G18 is going to move down as well. So I need to do an F4 to get the dollar signs in there. I'm good. And when I copy it down, plus sign, a swift left, double click, we go to rank 15. This is good. If I have two counts that are the same, it will give me ranks that are the same. First two. I need value of left of the absolute value getting a little tricky here, of F4 times, I'm going to do 1,000. That means I'll get all numbers greater than one penny uh, accurately first to digitized. And let's see how many times I have to close. Uh, another close, one, two, three at the end, I think so. Oh, come on, let's do, yes, wonderful. Um, it got it there, I'll do an F2. Back again, copy it down, plus sign, swift left, double click, and indeed, that is number one, beautifully done, if I must say so myself, with everything as it is over there. The first 15 positions, so high levels of duplications of 550. How does this tie in with the three largest Z statistics? Um, there is the 500 and there is the 50. I have lots of 500s, lots of 50s. How does this tie in with the answer? If I go back to that solution, which looked like this, Right there, we said the three largest spikes were at 50, 75, and 78. 
There's the spike at 50. I have many more numbers than what I would expect under Benford's law, beginning with 5, 0. And indeed, the answer to number 2 is these two numbers essentially caused that spike at 5, 0. That's how it ties in with the three largest z-statistics. 5, 0 had the largest z-statistics. Run the last two digits test. Use the sense and a screenshot of your last two digit graph. File open. Uh, that's where my Negrini cycle is. I'm going to go back to my data, which is here. Checkbook. There it is. As before, copy the entire column D. Go here. Paste. And to run the test, you in fact have to highlight this and copy it all the way down to the end. Plus sign, swift left, double click. It's all the way down to the bottom. However, you should go and do a check. The requirement was um, run the last two digit test, screenshot of your last two digit graph. There it is, last two digit sense. And this is indeed my last two digit graph going from double zero to 99. These are my actual proportions of the bars. The expected proportion is 0 0.01. I have a hundred of them and they're equally likely. And we can see the huge spike going up to 0 0.42 at double zero. Screenshot of your last two digit graph. Which last two digit combination occurred most frequently? We can see it is there, but I would prefer going to tables. I would prefer going to the last two digit sense. And I would prefer going to the proportions, which are here. And looking for the largest proportion by doing home, conditional formatting, top bottom rules, top 10, but we're going to change it from top 10 to top 1. And there it is. The largest actual proportion is for the double zero. Does your answer in 5 tie in with your answer in 1 above? So what this is saying is the most frequent last two digit combination when looking at the sense is double zero. There we go. When I go to my answer, which is here, I can see that at least in the first 15 positions, all of these numbers end with 0 0.00. The answer does tie in. When I look at the most frequently occurring numbers, they all end in double zero. Number six, number five says double zero was the last two, the most frequently occurring last two combination. Access. Do an import number duplication greater than 10. So we're doing this. I'm going to go. I'm in access. Blank database. I'm good. I'm getting my external data from file Excel. I'm going to browse and get my data. that. Open. Not Sesame. Open Access. This is good. And this usually is good. I don't want a primary key. I have one. Checkbook finished. That was faster than yesterday. I'm good. There is checkbook, it's open. And now what I want to do is I want to import, which I've done, change the criteria and run the number duplication test as shown in figure 512. We go here, page 147. There we go. The number duplication test. I want something that essentially looks like my answer to uh, part one. Here we go. And I'm 
good. It's a query. So create, query design, and I'm good to go. I really only have one table, so we're going to bring checkbook, jump it in, double click, and that's all. So I'm going to close this. Here we go. I'm going to bring amount in. And it's going to be count of amount. I'm going to go here, bring amount, and I'm going to give it a name, count, C-O-U-N-T, colon. Count amount, up to the sigma sign, not group by, but count. The reason I put this first is because I do want it to sort by count descending. I'm going to tell it to do so, but it should do so automatically. I now want the dollar amount itself. I'm going to click this down and change the title to dollar space. I don't want a space. Amount colon. Here we go. And I want to group by is good. Sort descending. So group by amount and count amount. So far, so good. I also want the first two digits of the amount and I prepared here this is the formula for the first two digits value left of amount it's going to make a mistake with the negative numbers but I don't mind because I'm ignoring them anyway control V that is in and now this is an expression I no expression there we go much better and i only wanted to do so where the amount i could have jumped it from there where the amount where the amount is i'm in the criteria row here greater than or equal to 10. i think this is good and i should end up with something that looks like Number one, run. Isn't this beautiful? I'm going to save, and I can save this as query number dupes or pos. I do want to analyze positive and negative separately. I'm actually good here. Um, Do the results for the first 10 rows agree with the Excel results in one above? In other words, I have my first 10 rows here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I go all the way down to 251, 400. If I go back here, I'm at 251, 400. And, um, Show a screenshot of your first 10 rows, and I leave it up to you to copy or to uh, compare this versus that. Construct a query to extract all the transactions with first two digits 50. You will need to adapt the query in figure 513. Let me go here. 513. I'm doing the same here. I can see what's happening there. There we go. Back to access. I'm going to save this, even though I just did it. I'm going to close this table one. It's just a pest. There we go. I now want to extract. It's create. Query design. Uh, I want to query checkbook. I gave it a left double click there. Here we go. And now, which fields did I want? ID, government category, left click, double click. Vendor name amount. Check date, department, expense type. Expense type. I really only wanted to do this 
where cases where the criteria where the amount is greater than or equal to 10. So I put that in the criteria line here. And I also wanted the first two field is a calculated field. This is my formula, which will work fine for the positive numbers. And for the negative numbers, when I use left, it'll pick up the negative sign. Control V. There it is. And I'm good. Um, it hasn't put expression in there. It doesn't need to do that. First two. Oh, and I want, <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, one thing missing here uh, was first two digits 50. Yes, good point. Uh, if I did this, I'm going to get everything greater than or equal to 10. I don't want everything greater than or equal to 10. I want it to have first two digits 50, 5, 0 put in there. And I want it to sort by dollar amount descending. And I'm going here. Amount, I need a sort descending, and I should get the big, the big five O's at the top. Find the exclamation point. We're good. I have some half a million transactions, half a million and change, half a million, just over 50,000. They have all first two digits five zero, and the requirements are show the first 10 rows. I leave that up to you. Review the case submission checklist. Good work, everybody. Bye-bye.